All right. <laughs> uh, it's been a really good. It's been a really good run rehabbing the knee and rehabbing the the back. Things are feeling pretty good. I did lifted five to be eighty five this week. Um, but uh, I ran into a new issue, <laughs> which is always going to happen once you, once things are going pretty good. And I and I thought about this too in my head. I said, "Fuck, things have been going really well. Something's probably going to go wrong soon." <laughs> I don't know if that cursed me or what, but anyway, I'm pretty sure I tore my labrum. I was pressing 80s overhead, seated press at the gym, 80s overhead, and um, I heard a on the it was like the ninth rep. I heard a snap and a pop pop. And it was like deep inside my left shoulder. And so I'm, I'm not going to do it, right? Because I'm having a really hard time. This is day two. It was yesterday at 7 a.m. It's 10 a.m. the following day. So uh, lifting your arm out to the side, super painful. Can do it if I fight, but it sucks. And then out to the front, same thing. I could do it, but it's fucking brutal. Um, to cheat, one thing that I can do, because I have to use my arm. I'm not going to take any time off of work or anything. Um, I can like tilt my body forwards to get me through the sticky spot. And I'm like, okay, I'm like right there. And then I can lift. Oh, that's pretty bad. But yeah, I can like cheat a little bit. Um, and again, too, this is like day two of a, of a suspected labral tear, right? So I've got, uh, I went to emergency last night and I told the lady, she said, we have to send you for an x-ray. And I'm like, you're not going to see anything. And she's like, it's procedure. I'm like, I know. You're not going to see anything. She's like, you want any Tylenol? I'm like, no, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> so here's a useless uh, imaging and here's some useless meds for your fucking injury. I don't understand. But anyway, aside from all that, I get it. Procedural, whatever. They just have to go through the motions and what it is. Um, I feel like I know injuries better than they do. But I got a little piece of paper from her that says basically like what Paul needs is an ultrasound. And uh, really, like, what's the ultrasound going to do? It might confirm or deny my suspicions, which would be nice because it'd be nice to know if it was an anterior, posterior, or what, like how, how what degree of uh, separation is it, if any. And um, honestly, it doesn't really change too much about how I'm going to rehab it. You just have to let it heal a little bit so that you can move it around, try to regain pain-free range of motion, strengthen the rotator cuff. It's pretty simple. And... Uh, I would like to start a video vlog on like how I'm going to recover from this thing. Cause another, <laughs> I'm going to throw another crazy goal out there. The first thing I'm going to do is don't catastrophize. Don't say, Oh my God, my, like my lifting career is over and I'm not even going to take a day off of work. I'm going to work on Tuesday. I have pe people booked. I can push, I can push, but I can't really pull or lift my arm. Right. So thank God I can push. Cause if I couldn't push, then I'd be like, okay, this is actually going to be impossible to do my job. I don't have insurance and I don't make a lot of money right now. So um, I got no choice. So from here, I think what I'm going to do is just, you know, set a goal. So I think in 24 months, I'd like to try to beat my best overhead. My best push press is 335 for a single. So I'd love to beat that in about two years. Um, aside from that, um, that means no competing or anything like that for at least two years. So that takes the stress out of that. And uh, in the meantime, I'm like, honestly, just chill, relax, train your lower body. My knee is feeling great. My back is feeling great. So I've got a lot of other stuff I can do in the meantime, like cardio. I just started swimming too, which is a little bummer because you have to like use your shoulder. But as soon as it's good to go, I think one of the best exercises I can probably do for this labrum is get back in the pool and start swimming. So one of the things I'm going to do today is go in the hot tub and just float and just like move my arm up and down like this. It's day one, right? Move your arm up and down a little bit. Don't overdo it, but get in the heat, get some circulation in there. And uh, again, don't catastrophize. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's a little depressing, but I mean, look, if you want to be strong and your body doesn't want to be strong, you're going to run into some shit, right? So anyway, that's what's going on with me today. Uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but I think I'm going to start trying to record some of the process of like how to recover from a labrum tear because... This would be useful for somebody, right? So now it's just like one more to check. I've had that blown out. This is how you get better from it because I've had so many things blow out. It's almost just like a nuisance now more than anything. Like last, it was the pec and pec is fine. Now it's the uh, left left labrum, I think. <laughs> and uh, probably in seven or eight months, it'll be fine. So whatever. So here we go. Let's rehab a labrum. So the first thing I'm going to try to do today is just get my shoulder kind of warmed up because I'm going to train legs 
And uh, my plan for today is to hold the safety squat bar, which has handles out here. So I'm able to kind of keep the shoulder relaxed, but still do something related to legs because um, I was progressing to uh, the goblet squats, but I won't be able to hold anything like that with my arm like this. So uh, safety squat bar is gonna be my workaround. And this is gonna be my first warm up thing. Because it's important that the that the arm be, not get frozen, right? So after a, after a big injury, oftentimes we freeze up and, and they affect the joint. So that was easier than that did this yesterday. Wow, that was tough. I'm not going to overcook it because uh, everything's pretty painful and it's day two, right? So I just want to get some range into it. I might even just do some passive range of motion too with like the other arm. Yeah, that's quite painful. Man, maybe it's a little too early for this. So this is a, another thing about rehab too, is I feel like some of it is like experimentation. Usually what I would say to a patient is give it like seven days. Give it seven days before you start training with it because, you know, it's acute. It's acute. It's an acute issue. And uh, when it's just banged up like that too. It's almost like, uh, imagine how it is on the outside of the body. You get a big cut, right? Would you start like rubbing and moisturizing it before the cut was like, at least the scab was gone? Probably not. You know, maybe you'd moisturize it a little bit, like at least once a scab, you know, like, so this is like two days later, it's fresh, it's super fresh. If this was a, a scab from a large laceration, it would still be extremely tender and probably still be weeping, right? So this is um, ambitious. I guess it's the way I like to do it. Again, I would probably suggest you wait seven days. Uh, anyway, I think it's time to go train legs. We're gonna find workarounds for the warm up. It's supposed to be abduction, adduction, so uh, the groin and the glutes, and then probably I'm gonna to try to find something for core too because this can be a challenge because any pressure on the shoulder is excruciating right now. So we just have to find ways to work the lower body and the core without aggravating the shoulder basically. So here we go.
Right? You still have all these other parts. It's not game over. You know, it's just game over for the left shoulder for a bit. That's all. Thank you. 
Thank you.